welcome to the meeting of ag gavel universal club india i am aridev bilavdia the sergeant at arm of the club please repeat the mission after me we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication skills resulting in great self confidence and personal growth literacy is a bridge from misery to hope A very good morning to one and all present here. I am Gavile Sara Hussain, and today I am going to be talking about the power of reading. But wait, first let me invite our club mentor, who is none other than DTM Alok Kumar Sharma. Thank you very much, Sara, for doing the welcome. I am very very happy, and children, I am more happy to have. Dr. Thakur Mulchandani, sir, with us. He is a pioneer. He is a renowned educationist. Dr. Mulchandani is the principal of Sunrise Private English School. He is doing such great in the field of education that innovation, new technology, the out of thinking, uh, out of box thinking. he has brought in into the field of education and today he is our keynote speaker so that we can learn some lessons on on leadership building so i welcome sir may I request sir to please start his keynote address welcome and over to you sir good evening to all the students good evening to the organizers it's a great being here and i love speaking uh coincidently this is my 201st interaction session which i'm doing right from 2002 my journey has been very glorious thanks to almighty and prayers i have done my schooling from one of the top most schools of burivali mumbai india that is st francis dssc then i have done my bcom from mithibai college again which is mumbai university and i did become a teacher in 1992 because right from my grade 4 i had a passion to be a teacher i wanted to be a teacher because that was in my blood although my father wanted me to join his business which i really never liked and uh, there my journey starts and in 94 i felt if i have to be a full fledged and a uh, you know a qualified teacher i did my b ed which is bachelor's in education again from bombay teachers training college in mumbai and uh, in the year 1998 i became the vice principal or supervisor as you call it in the school and then i felt that if i'm become the vice principal why not the principal you know my dreams and anxieties and passion grew with teaching and then i did my ma maths then i did my mmed at the same time i did mba from iim delhi through you know the best course because we were just 20 selected and finally my phd my favorite and stronger subject has been mathematics and i have been the board examiner for almost 8 to 9 years board moderator right now from 2013 i am in sunrise english private school which is located in abu dhabi uae and as i said mathematics has been my passion and i always believe that every child every student has a right to study right to grow right to learn right to read in our school we i said that if there are seats every child gets admission it's not a child who gets 90 percent only has a right to study even a child who gets 30 40 50 60 whatever every child is unique every child is different every child has a right to study that's what i believe always and i feel studying is the birthright of each and every individual on the surface of earth you know that's how my thoughts and beliefs go and i'm very very thankful today to the act universal gavel club india for giving me an opportunity to speak to children on the power of reading i am not going to do any presentation i believe uh, i will speak and i will try to get information from you all at the same time i will speak on certain points 
where I feel you will have a lovely interacting time. So I'm not going to put up any presentation because I know there are students all around. So I believe it should be 10 person teacher talk, 90 person student talk. And that's what my teachers do in all the classrooms as far as possible. In maths, they are not able to achieve this because maths is not reading, maths is writing. Maths is writing and writing and writing. Uh, it's nice to be here. So I begin with the concept of power of reading. Now, when you talk of power of reading, it is something which helps you, you know, to develop inference, deduction, and comprehension skill. And power of reading does not just mean, you know, you are reading regularly, you're writing and you're creating a cohesive learning experience. Remember, learning is all happening, not in the four walls of the classroom. It happens everywhere. Right now, you are situated in different parts of India. I'm situated in one part of the world. Still, there is learning happening. We are not in the classroom. You are in the four walls of your house. I am in my house here. So learning is happening. In other words, reading is something which is said to be the center, the heart of literacy. Literacy, numeracy, numeracy and scientific skills. All these are very, very important at the heart of the curriculum. Very important. Very, very important. Today you refer any, any subject. English, Maths, Science, Hindi, Social Studies, whatever, whichever subjects, you know, uh, you may be studying in your schools right from so many years. Reading is said to be the center of all of them. You cannot study anything without reading. You cannot grasp anything without reading. You cannot understand anything without reading. So reading ultimately becomes the center of any learning process. Today, we all have become teachers. We all have become professionals, individuals, thorough professionals. It's because we have read a lot. We have read a lot. I still remember, I mean, I, I always take examples. You know, that's how things fit in faster. I don't remember studying or reading so much as I did for my MED exam, Masters in Education. I was a ranker all my life, but... Uh, Emmet was just, you know, eight to nine months. Coincidentally, I registered late because I was busy with my school jobs as a principal. And the exams were announced somewhere in May uh, 20, uh, 2009, sorry, to be precise. So I was studying last few days as if, you know, I'm going to have a board exam to appear. And I have a very bad habit. You call it bad or good. I can't sit and study. I walk and study except maths, which you have to sit and write, okay? My legs pain, and this is right from my childhood, right from the grade of, I mean, when I was, you know, in grade three. I walk, I read, I develop my points, and that's how I write answers. There's nothing to buy heart. There's nothing, you know, uh, see, everybody has got some or the other originality, some or the other uniqueness, some or the other creativity. So reading is a power which, each one of us have to develop. And if you go by research of, you know, David Pearson and Stephen Harvey, reading is providing you with tools to become more creative, more innovative, more thoughtful, more meaningful, more knowledgeable, and more expressive. Today, if I know something, it's because I have read a lot. You children talk because you have read a lot. It's not necessary, you know, that, uh, I mean, you can always be expressive and creative the minute you know what is reading like. So reading is very, very important. And reading is a power. Reading is, uh, it's, you know, it's one of the skills each and every child, right from the, you know, I can say right from <coughs> KG to an adult like me, who's 52 years old today, or any adult on the surface of the earth should have knowledge and information about. So reading doesn't come up with any age. It does not come up with any habits. It does not come up with any position. It does not come up with any title. It does not come up with any gender. It comes from knowledge. It comes from experience. It's come from understanding. It comes from your thoughts. It comes from your meaningful reading actions. 
So when you're talking of reading, reading is an art. Reading is very important. Today, if you have to be better individuals, successful individuals, and you know, achieve some purpose, aim, and position in life, reading becomes absolutely important. And reading does not mean reading, you know, books. It could be reading newspapers. It could be reading online articles. Online studying has become a fashion courtesy COVID from the last 18 to 19 months. Right from March 2020, the whole world is, you know, baffled by coronavirus or COVID-19 as we have been calling it in the other language. So in other words, the more you read, the more you understand, the more you read, the easier it becomes for you to complete or understand the world around you. Remember, nobody is a born leader. Nobody is a born teacher. Nobody is a born doctor. Nobody is a born researcher. Nobody is a born scientist. All this is developed by one important quality, which is reading. So reading therefore becomes an essential tool, an essential habit, and an essential you know, way of life. I, I will now give a chance for you all to talk because it should not be me talking you know, continuously. I, I would definitely like to hear from the students who are there in this interaction today. Uh, I just want to know from you all, why do you feel reading is important? If I can hear one, one, you know, reason from each one of you, I would request you all to unmute and speak. I mean, there's nothing like I and you. I believe everybody has a right to speak. When I talk to my teachers or my students, I do talk for five, 10 minutes. Then I give them a chance to express their views and opinions. Unless it's a very serious meeting where we need tasks to get done. Then it's me talking, talking, talking. In other words, I call it chapar chapar. I always tell my teachers, do less chapar chapar. Talking, give children a chance to talk, speak, interact, discuss, collaborate, connect. Okay. So I just want to know, I, I can see one child, Sara, she has raised her hand. Yes. Why is reading important, Sara? I think reading is like the food for the brain, like just how our body needs food to sustain itself and function correctly. That's how our brain also needs to continue to learn new things. Fine. That's good. That's a very good you know, thought. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Shaurya. I, I may not pronounce your names properly. Yeah. Shaurya. Shaurya Raj. It's sure, oh, the re reading is important because uh, reading is reading is everything for, for understanding. We can understand by reading the 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 words. Okay. In That's... maths, it is also very. Continue. Yeah. Continue speaking, Shaurya. Continue. Okay, and reading is important for maths because it is everything in maths. In maths, we can do the problems by read the words, and by reading, we understood how to do the question, and then we done it. So that is why reading is everything. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Ishan Sharma. Ishan Sharma. Yeah. Master Ishan Sharma. Sir, for me, reading reduces stress and it strengthens our uh, focusing and uh, that's all, sir. Okay. Miss Asmi Patil. Asmi Patil. Yeah. Thank you, sir. For me, uh, practically reading is a very important part of our life to become successful, as well as what we learn in our life after reading, we don't forget it. And some way or the other, it will be used somewhere. Some way or the other, we'll know how to use reading. Suppose if I read about a topic here, then I can use it there. Then uh, it's really important for even leadership. Uh, if we know more knowledge, we can also ca like tackle situations quickly and more, <clears throat> I would say, more efficiently. Yes, sir. Thank you. Miss Avni Singh. Thank you, sir. According, 
according to me i think you should read because it gives you the power to speak when you know when you read you get to know words you get to know you and you get to know grammar you get to know pronunciation no not pronunciation but you get the power to speak when you know when you know what to speak you get to speak and i think it's very important to read because it gives you the freedom to travel even when you are stuck like now we are stuck here in our homes because of the pandemic and i think you should read to get out of the we could get out of the pressured situation thank you wonderful miss manat saini manat saini yeah once you have finished speaking i think you can lower your uh, you know your uh, raise down so i know who's the next to speak i think desna jain remains and manat saini yeah manat saini yes sir thank you sir so according to me reading helps us in gaining confidence and uh, it puts us in a good mood and we able to gain more and more knowledge we get to know about more and more words so that we can use it our in our daily lives okay that's fine shreya miss shreya have you spoken shreya no sir next shreya then desna jain yeah yeah okay sir uh, i think that reading is the bridge between education and imagination like a uh, half of any topic of any subject can be learned by reading and it also helps us to travel mentally like suppose i am sitting in delhi right now and i read about any nice place for example then then i can mentally travel there all thanks to it thank you that's that's good 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 yeah fine miss uh, desna jain have you spoken no uh, what i feel from reading is that you can just escape reality and live in the world of the book so you can just get free from all the problems you have in reality and just be in a different world thank you that's great okay aman sharma i think then i take over you people are really good speakers you know very good speakers yeah aman sharma and the last will be i think vrinda arora vrinda arora and wamin kumar yeah yes aman reading is important for me because it plays an important role in self development <coughs> sorry it helps us to know ourselves it lightens our cap- capabilities of living our life as well as it help us to know about about the society great that's great thanks. great yeah fine brinda arora yes thank you sir so i feel that reading makes our thinking more creative and it even helps us enhance our imaginative skills it makes our imagination more better great y- yomini how do you pronounce your name Y O M I N I Y O M I N I. Good name, yes. different name. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, according to me, reading is reading is to mind. Uh, with reading, also we can increase our vocabulary, new words, and thank you. Okay, the last I think. Chetan Jain, you had your hand raised. I, I will allow you to speak because that's the last. Then I take over. Yeah, Chetan Jain. I think his hand was raised, Chetan. Yes, sir. According to me, reading is very important part of our life. Uh, by reading, you come to know about new words, new thoughts, and you use in our everyday life. Uh, you have to develop in yourself that you can say that reading is my passion. So reading is reading carefully and gain knowledge. So thank you. okay so let me you know continue you all have covered the 10 reasons which i was going to mention in one or the other way the very first reason why we should read is it improves your creativity and imagination remember creativity is different for different people okay uh, everybody has some or the other creativity and imagination in himself or herself everybody every one of us whether it's a 4 year old child or a 5 or a 10 or a 15 or a 20 or maybe a 50 or a 60 or a 70 year old adult okay everybody has some creativity and imagination and creativity and imagination is very very important like 
dreams also that from March 2020, you will have to study online. Okay. We never had online studies our times. God blessing, you know. I mean, I don't say there should be online studies because nothing can replace live teaching. So all the teachers had to come up with creative and imaginative ways of how to make their lessons more meaningful, more projective, more lively. And that's what, you know, reading played a big role. Secondly, I, I, I do agree. Most of you have said it. Reading helps you to learn. Yes, reading does help you to learn. You cannot learn anything unless you read through it, be it any subject, English, science, Hindi, social studies, whatever are the other languages and subjects you're studying. So to learn anything, we need to read, read, read. Next, it increases your vocabulary. That's very, very important. Today, if you want to be good speakers, profound speakers, profound orators, polished orators, you need to read, okay? Nobody can increase his or her vocabulary by just, you know, remaining away from books or remaining away from reading or remaining aloof of reading. You need to read because you need to increase your vocabulary. Today, wherever you go, English is the language spoken across the world. There may be more than 240 you know, countries in the world. English is spoken everywhere. No doubt, we should have roots of our mother tongue. Whatever be our mother tongue, we should have roots of our mother tongue. We should know to speak our mother tongue. We should know to speak the state language. And above all, we should have minimum basic knowledge. And I'm sure you all are English medium students have strong command over our vocabulary over the times. Improves memory. I, I, I do believe in that. I mean, I have a terrific memory by God's grace. It's because I read a lot. I read almost three to four newspapers online and at least seven to eight pages of a book. And being the principal, I don't know how many other documents I read in school, which I need to sign, I need to review, I need to understand, I need to implement, I need to, you know, put it into practice. So reading is very important. Reading does not go away with age. It should increase with the age. And if you want to be successful, you want to be strong, you want to be a dynamite, you want to be something different, you need to read, read, read. Next, it increases your concentration and attention of span. I believe in this very strongly. Today, if you need to keep your concentration intact, you need to increase and, and, and you want your attention span. Attention span means remaining focused on what's happening. Like I'm talking to you now. Okay. You are listening. You are trying to get some new ideas, some new thoughts. Reading automatically increases your concentration and attention span. You're focusing on something because you're reading, reading. Improves your writing skills. Absolutely very true. The more you read, the more you will write. The more you will write, the more you will develop your reading and writing skills. Remember, reading, writing all go hand in hand. I call it as LSRW. L is listening, S is speaking, R is reading, and W is writing. So reading definitely improves your writing skills. If you want to you want to write something, like today I was preparing for this uh, you know, meeting. As I told you, this is my 201st session. I'm conducting right from 2002 till date. I call it as a webinar or a seminar, okay? Maybe my 72nd uh, session online, okay? Right from uh, March 2020 till date, remaining all 100 and you know 30 odd or 29 odd have been face to face because we always used to have face to face sessions till 2020. Once COVID is struck, it's all online sessions, maybe around 71 or 72 session. So I, I I just prepared. You will be shocked, or you may say this is too much. I was just preparing my notes around quarter to three. I'm in Abu Dhabi. We are one and a half hour. Behind India, it's four o'clock right now here, where it must be five thirty in India. At quarter to three, I said, "Just let me prepare my list of points because I only need to know the main points." Then, as I said, I can do chapar chapar because I can talk, talk, talk because I read a lot. So I just know the heading. Then what I speak is up to me as long as it is sensible and logical. So it 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 it, it does improve your concentration. It does improve your writing skill. It reduces your stress in a very big way. Uh, the more you read, you run away from stress. You know, sometimes somebody is nagging at you, shouting at you. 
you know, I, I just put uh, my earphones and I start reading. Okay. I, I don't want to listen to what, uh, you know, the person is trying to speak when I know I'm right and the opposite person is definitely wrong. So your stress is gone. Your stress is reduced. You're focusing your energy. You're focusing your attention. You're focusing your energies on reading. Automatically, your stress gets dissolved and your stress is reduced. You know, it could be, you know, sometimes listening to music, listening to a song or listening to somebody's speech. It could be some voice notes. It could be, you know, podcast or anything, whatever, whatever you call it, you know, it makes you focused. It makes you reduce your stress when you resort to reading. It, it also extends your life. Okay. It's very proudly said that people who read live long. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that others don't live long, but reading definitely improves your lifespan and you live longer because you read. It boosts your empathy. Empathy means you try to understand people around you. You try to see situations around you. You try to come down to the level of the person whom you are addressed to, you're talking to, you're speaking to, you're dealing with, or you are having day-to-day -day, you know, management of things. So it improves your empathy in big way. In other words, you exercise empathy. And empathy is one of the very important skills we all human beings should have. And lastly, it expands your understanding of the world. You don't see the world as a small picture. You see the world as a big picture. And that's what we need to see. Look, uh, the world has become so small as we are all confined to our homes. I know schools have slowly started, starting in different parts of India. But the fear still remains. But trust me, pandemic is going to go in a few days. It is one nightmare which we all saw and we will forget it very, very soon. So these are the, you know, the, the habits and benefits of reading, which I feel is very, very important. Now, continuing my conversation further, again, I'll, I'll get back to you all because it's not me talking throughout. I, I would like to listen to you all and I hope you all enjoy me asking y'all to speak because it should be a two-way communication between the speaker and the students okay now do you all believe i mean i've already said it but i i, I still want to hear it from y'all uh, do you all believe that reading is helping you you know uh, develop your memory in a big way can somebody explain to me how it is then i'll come to my set of speaking do you believe that reading is you know helping you to develop your memory yes does reading help you to develop your memory Avati, please go ahead yeah uh, yeah miss avni thank you sir i do think that my I do think that my memory is growing with with the with every page I read, and I think that that everything I read. I remember that a few years ago I read a book. It was called Biscuit. It was about a small a dog, and I remember the dog went out on a snowy day and did many things. So I think that the more you read, the more you remember. And the more you remember, the more you can expand your knowledge. Thank you and over to sir. Yeah, uh, we have Ms. Shreya. Yes, you would like to speak something, Ms. Shreya? Yes, sir. Sir, like when we read a book, we remember every single thing that happened in the book. And when we get the habit of reading, and if we have an important event and we have a script written for it, as we have an, a habit, we will means we will uh, just read it and we will remember the whole script. So it definitely helps us improve our memory. Okay. So uh, yeah, ask me, Patil, you wish to speak something, Miss Ask me. Yeah. Yes, sir. If we see scientifically, uh, reading improves means any knowledge which you get, in, uh, like increases the number of neurons in your brain, uh, which in a way, helps to increase your uh, amount of things you can have in your brain. Memory, it increases the way you can actually store your memory. Not by hearting. 
it is in a way that you're understanding the concepts and then you're utilizing it in other uh, other ways as well okay so you all have you know all three four who have spoken have almost said it you know uh, i would say that it improves our memory okay aman sharma you wish to say something yeah aman sharma the last then i take over yeah miss aman master aman. reading help <coughs> reading helps us to develop our memory because this is human psychology that when you learn something you share it with all your friends family members and when you share it with someone it again prints print print in your mind again and again which helps to store the knowledge in your back memory and when you need that knowledge that hits your mind again which was stored in your back memory Thanks. wonderfully wonderfully you have just said it you know what i was about to say in other words you know uh reading does develop does develop does build up does promote does propagate your memory i mean all thoughts to it because you know people who have good memory have got very very good reading skills excellent reading skills okay reading skills are profound are very strong for people who have you know good reading skills and our brain stimulates all these activities you know our cognitive skills and other skills decline as we get old you know like cognitive skills decline after the age of 45 to 50 in grown up people but in children like you who are 10 15 or you know i i don't think there's any child here who's about 18 19 years your cognitive skills are at its strongest because of the age factor so i wholeheartedly agree that reading is improving your memory that's why we say reading should go up and up and it is a mentally stimulating activity for all of us again as i have said below the body health the health of your brain the health of your system all is related to your reading the more you read the more your life span life span will increase trust me uh it's not that people who don't read don't have a life span yes but reading is something which really helps you develop your life span and it is a foundational skill it is something which starts right from our birth you know i'm sure i'm not saying a one or two or three year old child should know reading but once you are in kg you are into school your reading skills slowly start developing you know it all happens right from a young age but it starts and remember importance of reading is always profound they give you 10 to 11 reasons there can be ample number of reasons why reading is important 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 okay Now, another very important question to you all i mean i could have put it in the form of a poll but uh, as i mean i i still want to hear it from you all because hearing is better than putting it in form of the poll because as i know i'm addressing students i said let me make the students talk i i i don't want you know myself to talk and just conducting polls is going to be i just want three or four of you okay who have not spoken till now okay uh, i'm sure all of you are studying in schools you have online classes okay i'm sure today you must be having holiday being a sunday but here we work sunday to thursday in gulf we work sunday to thursday we have friday and saturday holiday okay i been in school from 7 to 2 or 2:30 okay which is uh 8:30 to 4 your time in india and we work sunday to thursday and i'm sure sunday you must be all relaxing being a rest day okay as we do on friday saturdays here i just want to know besides school i'm sure in the school you are reading you are writing means your online classes now it's online courtesy covid how many minutes you think you should read in a day think and answer and i will be asking you the reason also just don't tell me one hour i will ask you why one hour okay take your sweet time i just want two or three students to speak who have not spoken till now they may be shy okay there's nothing to be shy uh, you may be right you may be wrong okay nobody is right or wrong everybody has his or her opinion how many minutes a day you should be reading as students okay 
I'm talking to students, so let me take it as students. How many minutes a day you should be reading? I'm not talking of your school time at all. Please remember, school, your teachers are guiding you, you're reading, you're learning the, the subjects thought. But how many minutes do you think you should read in a day? Okay. In a single day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see uh, uh, Miss uh, Master Kaur. Yeah. Kaur is there. Uh, Kaur is the child who had raised his hand earlier. I don't know. Where did he go? Yes. Kaur. There was a child by the name name of Kaur. He had raised his uh, hand. Uh, yes, sir. By I'm mistake. Sorry. No, no, I didn't change the hand by mistake. Okay. Miss Manha. Manha. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I think we uh, students, as students, we should at least you know, uh, do what our time. At least a half an hour to read a book. It's like basically, it's not read a book. You can read anything that is of your interest. You know, other than uh, of your personal interest, then you'll have to read two hours for our studies because studies are also important. But then other than that, to keep us engaged, we should at least do a time of half an hour, 15 minutes to just relax our mind. Would differ from her Ishan Sharma. Yeah, Master Ishan Sharma. Sir, I agree with her also. But I want to just add a little bit more that from uh, 15, 20 minutes, you can just take out all the stress from your mind. And next for some time, you can just read for your general knowledge. Like um, you get to, you will get to know new words and new information about new things, what is happening in the world. So that also can happen. And this can all be done in half an hour or like one hour or half an hour. Okay, uh, we have, uh, I don't know, how do you pronounce this? Good, 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 how do you pronounce this child? G U R S E. Uh, yes, uh, so it's Gursirat. Gursirat, okay, your name is something different. Okay, yeah, Miss Gursirat. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so the thing which I wanted to say is that a minimum 15 to 20 minutes is a must of reading every day because uh, if we read more than one hour or uh, our brain gets saturated, and then we are not able to gain more knowledge. So uh, the less you read, the more you gain knowledge because uh, that less time you're interested in reading. But if you if we read a lot, our brain gets saturated and we are not able to gain more knowledge. I think okay. uh, 20 minutes to half an hour is the perfect time. Okay, fine. Anybody else wishes to speak? Yes. Sarah Hussain. Miss Sarah Hussain, followed by Sunni Jaiswal. Yeah, Sarah. Yes, sir. So I wanted to say that um, reading from 15 to 45 minutes should be done. Well, I don't think so. It really matters how long you read. But yes, the real thing is that we should read every single day, no matter what, because reading strengthens our brain and we get a better set of mem we get better memory. That's fine. OK. OK. The next is Miss Sanvi. Yeah, Sanvi Jaiswal. I think that we should read. We should read each day. We can read 15 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, and whatever, whatever. But the thing is that we need to know what we are reading. We need to understand what we are reading, and the thing we are reading should be uh, fit in the mind uh, so that uh, we understand what we read. We get knowledge from what we read, right? Just now. Okay, Yomini Kumar, Miss Yomini. Yes, sir. So uh, I think it depends on the interest. And as I read, uh, I read 45 minutes, so uh, half an hour. And because we need to study uh, at the speed of snail, because um, um, because uh, we need to, there is a quality that uh, we should. We are reading less, but there should be quality in that that we should uh, read. Fine. Shreya, have you spoken already, Shreya? Yes, sir. Okay, Shreya, Mannat. Mannat has all spoken. Okay. In other words, I agree with you all. 30 minutes to maximum, maximum two hours is what you should read. I'm not saying at the time of exams, okay? Don't, 
take me wrongly and tell your parents somebody told us read only 30 minutes to 2 hours that's it our studies are over for the day i'm talking of a general time you know when you are studying at home okay or you are reading okay not exam time exam time the number of hours you read write and practice will definitely be more because i remember telling this to my 10 standard students they all went home and told to the parents principal told us read only 30 minutes to 2 hours that's it after that we close our books and relax i said that is terrible that's terrible that's terrible that was said in some other context and you know children took it in some other context uh, i'm just saying reading as a habit reading as a hobby reading as a practice or reading as a passion okay half an hour to 2 hours is something which maximum i feel you should be and that is what you know is reading uh, for me in a day i mean more than that it becomes difficult when you all are tied up with your studies with your workload and other pressures okay but the benefits are it is improving your intelligence it is improving your iq it is improving your emotional iq it is improving your knowledge reducing your stress and you are better than a non reader okay a non reader is one who doesn't read at all who doesn't read at all nothing neither in school nor at home nor anywhere okay and uh, again it's good as learning as i told you many of us many okay i i, I have even spoken to people about 40 and 60 70 years when i have spoken on certain topics and what i saw or felt or understood is all of them have enjoyed reading it's not only children reading everybody enjoys it may be to reduce stress it may to be improve it may be to improve your memory it's a pleasure or it's like you know you you reach some other world you know you're immersed into another world okay that other world is nothing but the reading world where you find sometimes you know comfort you find relief you reduce your stress you reduce your anxiety and you come out with your imaginations and skills and ideas and thoughts and opinions and beliefs okay so that's how i feel reading helps us to develop our skills but uh, half an hour to 2 hours is maximum a person okay uh, again i'm retaliating it's not for children who are studying for exams they you need to read write and practice a lot but as uh, just as a hobby or as a passion or you know to improve your knowledge and skills and memory or reduce stress or you know or drift your attention away maybe sometimes from tension or sorrow or grief or unwanted problems and uh, you know whatever half an hour to 30 half an hour to 2 hours you know reading is always useful it's always useful whether it's a holiday or it's a working day okay now another important part what i would like to discuss with you all is what are the reasons why you should read books daily okay this is something which is very close to my heart i read a lot of books okay a lot of books that's how i develop my knowledge um, undoubtedly my memory and uh, my understanding skills okay now when you are reading a book i i i take it into five to six areas you know number one is it's improving your brain function very important see none of us uh, at least i can remain away from books or reading okay Uh, i cannot imagine that i cannot imagine that even when i was in hospital for covid just two days i mean fortunately i was back home because the doctor sent me home because i was not the one who was going to stay in a closed room you know for 42 days unfortunately my covid lasted for 42 days in may 2020 <coughs> we had good internet connectivity there the hospitals give that because somehow you have to pass your time you know you just cannot be sitting on the bed and staring at the four walls you know uh, even that time i was reading because i was panic you know i mean i don't get panic very fast i'm a very strong motivator and i know how to get out of every situation so you know it improves your brain function if that time if i'm just sitting and thinking when i'm going to get well when i'll become negative blah 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 i'll be just diverting my brain and my energies to some other direction which is absolutely unwanted so your brain function definitely improves when you are reading a book the more you read the more better your brain function is going to get over a period of time trust me 
trust me, that applies to all of us. Okay. As I said, nobody is born clever. Nobody is an average child. Nobody is a below average child. Nobody is a born doctor or a teacher or a lawyer or a professor or an engineer. We all develop the skills with our own passion, with our own hard work, with our own determination and with our own success stories. We all create our own success stories. Do remember that. Okay. I mean, as I told you, I was a reader, I was a ranker, but my teachers never wanted me to be a teacher. I don't know why. I cannot give you the full part of the reason. Although I was a meritorious student, my teachers never believed that I will be a teacher. A good speaker, profound speaker, motivational. I was the head boy of my school in grade 10. It was only a boys' school. I was monitor all the nine years from grade 1 to 8 and 10. But my teachers felt, you know, no, this boy can become a lawyer or a politician. <laughs> that is what my teachers used to always tell me because I talk a lot. I talk a lot. But as you see, I give you a chance to talk. So when you read books, you definitely, definitely improve your brain function. Secondly, I'm sure you will agree, life, uh, reading brings meaning to life. It brings purpose to life. It reduces your stress in a very big way. Today, you are stressed, you are anxious, you are tensed, you are nervous. Or, you know, you're not able to forget some problem or tension or tragedy or grief or, you know, maybe your mother keeps on scolding at you sometimes when you don't study. Just start reading something, you know. Parents will scold because every parent wants his or her child to be successful in life. Every parent, irrespective. So reading will remove your stress. It will remove your anxiety. It will remove your tensions. It will remove your problems. And definitely success will be at your step. Most important according to me, which I believe and I, I, I strongly agree, it, increase, it improves your state of mind. Your thinking, your thoughts, your ideas, your beliefs, your opinions all change when you read. Today, when I say capital of India is New Delhi, I mean, we know it because we read. Okay? We know it because we read. Unless I read, my state of mind will not be perfect. I can't say Mumbai is the capital of India. No. Correct? I can't say all crows are white in color. These are all hypothesis statements. Okay? So you read, you see, you watch, you observe. That's how you develop your skills over a period of time. Very, very important. It improves your wellness. Your wellness means your, <coughs> your happiness quotient. Your thinking, your state of mind, your presence of mind, your peace of mind, it improves, you know, drastically. And lastly, which I strongly believe, it is very important that when you read, you read aloud. Read aloud means read loudly. Loudly does not mean at top of your volume so that a person tells you to reduce your volume. Read aloud. Read loudly. Okay. Read in mind. Read aloud. That's what I feel plays a very, very important role in reading. Okay. Now, I would again like to hear from you all uh, some opinions and thoughts. Okay. Before I go to my next uh, aspect of uh, speech. Uh, has anyone of you got awards? For, has anyone of you got awards for reading in your school? And I want to know in which uh, aspect. Yeah. Maybe awards, not awards, then appreciation. Okay, not necessary. You get awards always. Maybe appreciation from your teachers for reading. Anybody. Uh, I will I will come back to you all just in a minute. Yeah, Mr. Alok. Yes, sir. So after this, I'll just have one or two minutes break, sir. After this, just one or two minutes break. I hope that's fine. No, this is fine, sir. This is fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Starting with Manat. Yes. Followed by Aman Sharma. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, in, uh, thank you, sir. So in my third grade, uh, for reading, I got a book from my teacher from for reading. So it was a very interesting book. So uh, I got uh, I didn't got an award, but I got a book from, from my teacher for as an appreciation for reading. That's wonderful. In my school, we always give books as gifts. We don't. We give trophies, but we give books as gifts, you know, so that children read. 
So you have got an award from your teacher on an appreciation. Very fine. Fine. Yeah. Aman Sharma followed by Asmi Patil. Yeah. When I was in my class 9th, at that time, I got an award from our school while reading a presentation on LED lights. Wonderful. That's a great, great. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Ask me, Patil, fo followed by Sarah Hussain. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so when I was in second grade, usually at that time, we students don't uh, read newspapers as such. Not many students I know do that. Uh, so we were having a chapter in science and then ma'am was asking a question regarding current affairs. So I had given its answer and uh, I had got appreciation for that as well as I've got a prize in uh, fast reading as well as memory keeping uh, due to reading means you read one page and then later you give a summary after one to two hours. So in that I have received first prize from my school, sir. Wonderful. Yeah. Sarah Hussain. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in our school, there's this competition called the Reader's Cup, in which you have to read a book and you will have a few questions asked on that, and then you will win. So in that, in fourth grade, I had that competition wherein we read the books, uh, The Lightning Thief, something, I don't really remember the names, but yeah, I remember the story. So in that, what happened was, that after that I got selected for the final round and in the final round we were given a trophy as a reward and a book to read like two books per post, per child great great I think Avni Singh you have already spoken Avni yes. Singh yeah okay so it's wonderful to hear you know uh, in other words what I'm trying to put forth is reading will take you miles ahead in your career okay it doesn't put a full stop. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you grow, the more you understand, the more you try to pick up, you know, that's how life goes on, you know. So reading does not stop. It starts from the age of three or four and continues for years and years together. As I said, even at this age, we all of us read. We all, we all read, okay. It's not that we are grown up and we have been working we are successful in life. Reading does not stop a day, a minute. It, it goes on. It's an ongoing process. It is a continuous process. Okay. So I will just pause here for one or two minutes. I'll join you all back in a minute or two. Okay. Mr. Alok Sharma, I'll be joining in a minute or two. Fine. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So children, I would like to go to some of you to ask your experience. We'll continue with this. We shall not have our regular meeting or maybe a late, little later because uh, we are so very happy that sir is giving so much of knowledge on the topic. So may I ask that what have you reaped out of this session? Anybody who would like to tell me? The main points what you have received, are you noting them down or you are working on it or you are learning in a way that you will implement on those points later okay sarah please please do tell us yes sir so sir, whatever was sir was telling i was just typing it down so sir told us that reading every day is very important he told us the benefits of reading and he asked a few students he told us that reading improves the memory and uh, makes this size of our, not size of our brain bigger, but yeah, it helps us remember more things. Then uh, uh, then we told that reading improves our focus and concentration. Perfect, perfect, Sarah. Can we go to Chinmay, to Toastmaster Chinmay, if you have something to share? The thing apart from the the Part about reading that he was talking about, I found really fascinating. He also touched on things like podcasts, which I wish to ask him more about sooner, uh, sooner rather than later, so that we can keep in the momentum of the meeting. The things that he told about how education is a right that everybody should have also really touched me because that is something really important. And the way that he 
he read his school from the process of uh, you know discriminating among children based on the scores that they get hope that even the children who get 30 40 60 percent marks are also allowed to be part of the school those things are important and meaningful throughout his presentation he of course has vast knowledge about how important reading is for all of us and definitely you guys also have very refined ideas about the same the way you mentioned that 20 to 45 minutes of reading is something that keeps us excited and doesn't become monotonous for us so that is something that i would definitely encourage you all to do and i would like to do that myself i would like to get back into reading so that it's it's like uh, just as important as working out your body you should work out your mind as well so those are some things that i picked up from his speech thank you back thank over you. to dtm alok thank you very much toastmaster chinmay can we ask aisha our general evaluator aisha if you can give your points what did you learn from the meeting aisha is our new member here she was part of rising stars gavel cup she's a very promising girl aisha if you can hear me okay anybody else who would like to share other than sara sara has already spoken okay ankur wants to say something yes ankur yes sir we have to read books or newspaper and always give time to reading because reading makes our mind healthy and reduce stress thank Thanks. you thank you very much ankur who else would like to share his or her views okay ask me is there ask me please go ahead yes sir uh, some quotes i picked out is reading is the heart of literacy i really like that see, uh, statement it's really amazing as well as the rules sir uh, follows l s r w listening stands for l s speaking r reading w writing it also lets us like uh, go into a imaginary world reading and we have some quality time for ourselves yes sir perfect perfect so any language has these four basic pillars either you listen you speak you write or you read so if you follow these any language can be learned very easily so now digressing from the topic i'll just ask that how many of you learn more than four languages or speak more than four languages anybody who can speak more than four languages Four plus. Okay, ask me. Tell me which are those languages. So I speak English, Hindi. I speak my mother tongue, Marathi, and uh, then I know a little part of German uh, and a little part of Latin. Great, and Arabic as well because you are learning Arabic as your main yes, sir. language in UAE. Anybody else who would like to share? Avdi. Yes, sir. I speak English, Hindi, and Tamil. Is it's my it's a bit like my mother tongue, and I I'm also learning Spanish. I learned Arabic as I was studying in UAE, and that's it. Yes. Thank you very much, Avdi. I think Aisha is back. Aisha, what did you learn from today's session? Yes, sir. Um, in today's session, I learned about the importance of reading, how important it can be, how it's going to help us in the future. Okay, great job, Aisha. So I would go to Sara to show her presentation, and then we'll invite Sir back. Sara, if you have any presentation on reading. and yes, power sir. of reading please share your screen do you need a multi presentation okay i have done it for you over to you sara okay so sorry i was mute okay so let me just begin off with a quote literacy is a bridge from misery to hope a very good morning A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm going to be talking about the power of reading. So we all read books, right? I'm sure we have. 
Sometimes we read for pleasure, sometimes for passing time, sometimes for, to gain knowledge. In a world where entertainment is right in our hands, you might think, what is the point of reading? Well, let me give you all the reasons why reading is very important. Reading is food for the brain. In my opinion, this is the biggest reason why reading is important. Just like how our body needs food to sustain itself and function optimally, our brain needs to continue learning new things to function at the peak performance. The best part is that you can read fiction and non-fiction to get this benefit. Studies have shown that reading has the power to change your brain structure, which makes you more empathetic and improves cognitive processes. By reading more, you become smarter since you're consuming a lot of information and you keep your brain in top shape too. There is this quote from Game of Thrones that sums up this point very nicely. The quote will go something like this. My brother has his sword. King Robert has his war hammer. And I have my mind. And a mind needs books as a sword needs a whetstone if it is to keep its edge. So reading, as I was saying, reading improves our concentration too. You might think how, right? In our fast-paced world today, our att attention spans are really short. Reading a book can help fix this. Because when we read, our attention is focused on the story. Our attention is focused on the story and you, we can be fully immersed. You might even achieve a flow state when you are 100% focused and forget about the world around you. Let me give you a tip. Try reading 10 to 20 minutes every day before your morning routine or in the afternoon or whenever you find time. As you read book, you will be able to maintain your focus for longer periods of time. Even when reading something during the day at work itself, maybe you're working and simultaneously reading also. But one thing, keep in mind that if you read before starting your morning routine, I think you'll be able to do your morning routine better. Okay, so now let's see another point why reading is very important in my opinion. So, how many points have I told you till now? Two? Okay, let's see the third one then. Reading opens your mind. As a reader, you will interact with different stories from different people, with different ideas and different beliefs. This helps you open your mind and you will become more accepting of others as well as improving your ability to judge, uh, judge others' characters. Research of the University of Toronto finds that people who read short story fiction tend to be more open open-minded than the non-fiction loving peers. Reading jolts your brain into action, maintains concentration, and allows your mind to process the events before happening. Okay, now let me tell you all the fourth point why reading is really important. We, as Sir mentioned, reading helps improve your me memory. Whether you are your following your very favorite character from a book, or from a TV show, through their journey, or how do you remember the tips on how, suppose they, make, they are making more money in their movie? You have to remember those tips, right? So, to remember tips on how to make more money, you will be using your memory area, am I right? So that memory area is fitted into your brain and it keeps it active. When you really need to remember something very important, you, See these pictures. These are pictures of helping improve your memory. Every new memory you may create, sign, apes, or brain parts and strengthens existing ones so memorizing will get easier. So let me sum up my four points. My first point was that reading improves your focus and concentration. My second point was that reading is food for the brain. My third point was that reading opens your mind. And my last point was reading helps improve your memory. So 
I hope you all read every day. And now let's get back to the session Sir was talking about. Thank you very much, Sara, for doing such a great job. I very happily invite our keynote speaker for today, Dr. Mulchanani, once again, to enlighten our little hearts. Yeah, good evening, children. It's nice to be here. Uh, I have more five, six points to cover up and uh, definitely I'll be taking your inputs at the same time. I'll give my inputs at the end. Now, these are very four or five interesting aspects where you are really going to, you know, learn a lot, okay? This is what I'm telling you from my research when I did my PhD uh, from Mumbai University and Punjab, okay? One was crimes in school. You'll be surprised, you know. The topic is very sensational. Crimes is actually about corporal punishment, bullying, harassment, you know. Sometimes children do do children or other way around. So I did my PhD from Mumbai University. Unfortunately, that PhD did not get through because of certain reasons, which I cannot tell you all. Then I you know, had to switch to Punjab University for my other PhD, where I did attitude of college students towards the education system. Okay. When you're doing a PhD, you need to read, you need to read tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of books. And you need to write also, okay? I did land up writing 1,122 pages, all typed. In fact, not writing. My writing is awful. My writing is atrocious. I'm sorry to say that, you know. Now, lately, not as a student. So, as I said, reading is something, you know, which develops your knowledge, your skills. And uh, the next few points which I'm going to cover is something which is going to interest you a lot, a lot. And, uh, you know, Napoleon had rightly said, show me a family of readers and I will show you the people who will move the world. So if you need to move the world, you need to be strong, you need to be famous, you need to be dynamic, you need to be somebody different, somebody rare, somebody, you know, out of the earth. You need to be a good reader. You need to be a strong reader. You need to be a profound reader. You need to be an avid reader. You need to be a keen reader. Okay. Now, how do you improve your reading speed? This is one topic which I'm going to cover. Next, I'm going to cover something which is going to interest you all a lot. What are the important reading skills? And then, what is reading all about? Seven hacks to master reading and last i will talk about 25 books everyone must read okay if you want the details of this i will definitely send it to mr alok and mr alok will provide you all the inputs or whatever i'm trying to speak today as i just told you half an hour before the session could start i said just let me put down my notes that was at quarter to three ua time okay i said let me put down my notes and uh, I do that for all my sessions. I don't prepare. Yes, if there are PPTs, I prepare a day before. But again, during the PPTs, I see that it's not me doing chapar chapar. I like to hear my students. I like to hear my audience talk and speak. Okay, so coming up to these topics, which I said, how do you improve your speed reading? Or your reading speed or speed of reading, whatever way you put it across, okay? Uh, I will directly go to the points because the other points I would like to hear from you all. One is avoid distractions. Very important. Uh, when you're trying to improve your speed of reading, talking, speaking, learning, understanding, avoid distractions. This is something which is very important. Uh, the more you remain away from distractions, the more focused and channelized and energized you are going to be in reading. That's important. Next is go easy. Go easy means don't feel reading is something tough. You know English, you know Hindi, you will definitely know how to read it. I'm surely your mother tongue. Most of us, you know, know to speak, may not know to read and write. Like I'm from a Sindhi family. I know to speak Sindhi, but I don't know to read. I don't know to write Sindhi at all because I have never learned it. Okay. I know more than 11 languages, but I don't know to write all. 
but I know to speak them very fluently, like English, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Sindhi, Kachi, French, German, Pushto. Pushto is a very famous language. I'm sure very few of you will must have heard about it. And little here and there, uh, you know, Urdu, which is into my blood, and uh, Kachi because of the connections, Punjabi because of you know being similar to Sindhi. So these are the 10, 11 languages I can speak very, very fluently, very fluently. Marathi, especially because I am from Mumbai, Maharashtra. Till 2013, I was there almost, uh, you know, 44 years of my life. So go easy. Uh, nothing is tough. Trust me, nothing is tough. Anybody comes to me with a problem, I have to smile at them and give them a solution, not make faces and stare at them and scare them and drive them away saying, oh, this is not possible. I mean. You should know how to burn and bury and, you know, put the problems under your feet. The problems should not capture you, okay? You should capture the problems. Thirdly, I would say, if you want to improve your reading speed, cover your words that you have already read, okay? You're reading, you know, maybe a paragraph, a passage. Cover the words you have read so you know what you're reading and what is left to read, okay? It might be a 22, 25 lines uh, paragraph or a reading phrase. Cover the words which you have already read. Okay. Know what you want from the text. That means you should know to comprehend what you're reading. What are you understanding? What are you grasping? What is the theme? What is the learning objective in that particular paragraph or passage? Whatever. Okay. You, you, you see, when you're reading, you need to Apply your minds, your, your mind, your memory, your thinking quotient, your emotional quotient. All these needs to work very, very carefully. So I'm repeating once more, avoid distractions. Very important. Go easy. Cover the words that you have already read. Know what you want from the text. Benchmark your progress. How fast I can read. Okay, Reading does not mean just reading. It also means understanding what you're trying to read. Okay, that's your progress. If I can read one page in five or ten minutes, okay, a page might be containing around 30, 40 lines. Excellent. If I can read it in lesser time, the next page, that means you have progress, you have benchmark. But I'm repeating again, it's just not reading, it's trying to understand what you read. And lastly, the very famous, you know, uh, word, practice, practice, practice. The more you read, the more your accuracy the more your speed of reading is going to automatically increase over a period of time. Okay. Today, uh, we are able to talk fast. We are able to speak fast. We are able to orate. We are able to speak. We are able to comprehend. We are able to understand. We are able to digest what we hear, what we listen is because of our reading skills. Trust me. Trust me that. Trust me. Okay. Uh, as I said already, reading does not stop. Even at this age, I do read books. When I travel for summer vacation to India, I do take books across with me to read. I try to read it in my journeys across different places. I travel to India for, uh, you know, professional development sessions or sessions like these, which I'm having with you all online. Okay. Or in India, I normally have face-to-face -face sessions. As I said, till 2019, I do take books with me to read because that is how I develop my knowledge, my skills, my understanding, my application my thoughts, my ideas, my beliefs, my opinions. The next important uh, point which I would, you know, try to discuss with you all because it should be a two-way process. What are the important reading skills? Can anybody, you know, tell me what are the important reading skills? They are just uh, four or five of them, okay? It's not around 2030, okay? I'm not asking you the names of different plants and animals or creatures on the surface of the earth. I'm just trying to ask you, what are the different types of reading skills which you should have? Or what are the different reading skills? Yeah, can I hear it from Ishan? Uh, who has raised the hand? Okay, Ms. Shreya, yeah. Yeah, Shreya followed by Sarah Hussain. Okay, sir. Sir, I think one of the most important reading skills is understand what you're reading. Because that's the main objective of reading anything. Fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Sarah Hussain. 
Uh, so I was saying, uh, what if it would be fluency also fluency, like being really fluent while you're reading? Yes, absolutely. You are absolutely correct. Yes, yes. Ishan is done with. Can we have uh, your Yomini? Yomini, your name is really different. Yomini Kumar. Yeah. Yes, sir. So according to me, that um, we should read less, but uh, that it it should have some quality. We should understand more. Absolutely fine. Yes. A anybody else would like to add? I have just got two skills. There are at least one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Yeah. Ishan wants to speak again. Done. Followed by Sachi. Yeah. Yeah. Ishan. Yes, sir. Sir. Oh. Yes, Ishan. Yes, sir. My point is, first of all, we should avoid distraction. And second, uh, we should be focused and channelized. Fine. Okay. Sachi. Sir, we should have curiosity that is interest. We should concentrate and focus in that particular story and we, sh we should have the reading skills. Thank you. Okay, ask me, Patil, Ms. Ask me. Yes, sir, vocabulary. As you had said, it's very important as well as reasoning. Why exactly you're trying to look at the story means what is the perspective, objective? Absolutely fantastic. Very good, very good. Manat. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, we should have a full working uh, memory and our full attention should be towards the book. Very good. Okay. Manha wishes to say something. Yeah, Miss Manha. So, I would like to tell that um, we should have attention to the book or you have to keep concentrating on the book. Then only we will understand the whole book. Uh, once you complete the book, we should at least understand what the book was or remember what the book was, like all about or the setup of the book. So then for that, we should give attention to the book and concentrate on it. So then you're calling the word decoding. You're using the highest word, which is decoding. Yeah, that's the first point. You're absolutely correct. So the six major points, you know, which you need to look, you know, to improve your skills. Okay, important reading skills. One is decoding. As this last uh, child, you know, Mana said it, you know, what you're trying to read, how you're trying to read, why are you reading? That's very important. We call it as decoding. Ne next is fluency, as one student has already said. Next is vocabulary. Very important is sentence construction. How am I reading the sentences in totality, completely? Okay. Reasoning, as again, one student has already said it. Okay. What you're trying to read. And most important thing is working memory and attention absolutely important that's 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 one of the most you know important elements which you need to see when you are trying to improve your reading skills and if you have all these six you're going to be a good reader you're definitely going to be a good speaker you're going to be a good writer and you're going to be a person who has terrific tetra 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 byte memory okay uh, it's not that computers only have memory there are human beings I have seen and, you know, personalities I have met who have got terrific, 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 terrific memory. So that's how it goes. Now, as I said already, you know, reading is an exercise. It is improving your memory. It is improving your brain skills. It's improving your retention. It's improving your way of reasoning your way of thinking, your way of understanding, and above all, it is developing, you know, skills for you to reduce your stress, your anxiety, your fear, and, you know, it helps you to develop your passion. Do remember, nothing can be achieved in life without reading. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Today, we are teachers, we are students, doctors, lawyers, professors, engineers, technocrats, scientists, it's all because they have read something. All of us have read, learned, and understood something over a period of time. 
And uh, do remember when you read, your brain connectivity is increasing drastically. Your vocabulary is increasing. Your comprehension, comprehension is understanding of the passage, understanding, understanding of the points what you are reading is increasing. You empathize with other people. Empathize means understand. You try to come down to the level and understanding of the person with whom you are interacting, you are talking, you are speaking. That, 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 that skill is something, you know, empathy is something which we all need to develop. And I, I believe empathy is something which has become so profound courtesy COVID-19. Empathy is something which we all have developed, understood, imbibed into our thoughts, into our process, into our lifestyle, because we have seen so much happening around people suffering. Okay, they are back to negative uh, COVID results, but so many people have died, died in situations which we cannot imagine, okay, away from their family. Uh, and there were so many other things, you know, the world is witnessing even right now, all over the world. COVID-19 is at its peak. So empathy is one thing which we all have developed over the period of time. Uh, as I said already earlier, it is helping you read. It is hel helping you reduce your stress. It is helping you in lowering, you know, your blood pressure. Very important. You cannot have a high blood pressure. It helps you to fight depression. It helps you to find all the ailments and most important, cognitive decline. Okay, very important. Cognitive decline is something very, very important for every person. So reading is helping you in all this in a very, very big way. So we just cannot live in a world without reading. Very important aspect, which I would like to cover now, you know, just two more important aspects. Seven hacks to master reading as the ultimate secret to success. Now, this is something which is really going to interest all of you. Okay. Uh, See, we all read, okay, like when I'm talking to you, you're trying to read, you're trying to understand what I'm trying to speak, okay. You're not reading directly from a book, but you're trying to read from my sentences, from my thoughts, from my opinions, from my expressions, from my speech, from my conversation, from my interaction with you. So there are certain strong ways of mastering reading hacks means you know i could say processes steps or you know uh, or ways out you know so what are the seven ways out for you as students to master reading and to take reading to the next level of success in your life okay the very first one is read when your mind is at its peak. Very, very, very important. When your mind is disturbed, okay, or you feel that, you know, you really can't do anything further, okay, you're tired, you're fatigued, you're burnt out. Burnt out means, you know, enough now. I have done a lot of studies for the day. I can't study further anything now. Don't read that time. Read when your mind is fresh. Read when your mind is relaxed. Read when your mind is at ease. Read when your mind is at peace of my peace. Okay. Today you're grieving, you're crying, or you're stressed. You're tired, you're feeling sleepy. You just want to lie down and take rest. That's not the time when you should be reading. You should be reading when your mind is at its peak. Only when you are at a peace of mind. So the best time to read is, you know, maybe after a long run or when your mind is relaxed or you are at your best of mood. Next is, if you want to be a good reader, plug in and listen to audiobooks. Okay. Audiobooks is what I always, you know, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Lots, lots. Okay. I read also, but I listen also to a lot of audiobooks. There are a lot of podcasts where people express their views on certain topics. They record it and they release it to the public. Like I'm sure you must be having access to Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and maybe small for you kids because it's only for grown-up professionals. So all these are areas where you know people release their podcast 
and that is wonderful again reading audio books start reading as young as possible as i already said there is no age to read you can read at any age every age okay very very important next is find the right book okay you are you are you are going you are studying for an exam definitely you will pick up the book of which exam you are having you are studying for an entrance exam you will definitely pick up the book which you need to refer to to appear the entrance exam so pick up the right book whenever you are trying to read or whenever you are trying to study read books that expand your creative mind very important don't read books which are dry dull and which are not meant for your age at all okay only when you make an effort to get the right book okay and the book with creative mind and creative ideas you will be able to come out at your best most important read the books which establish your philosophy your philosophy means your thinking your way of life your approach your thoughts your opinions your beliefs and very important read books before during and after you exercise very very important Uh, I, I'm not saying you should go to a gym and exercise. You can exercise at home. You can meditate at home. Before, during, and after exercising, you should definitely read a book. It gives you a way out, you know, a purpose out to understand and read books. So that's how things. That's how I feel. You know, things take its shape and place in time. Okay. I, I just want to know: Do you all have any questions? You all can ask me. then i'll be coming to the last phase of my topic which is 25 books which everyone must read i'll just rush through those books uh, i mean at the end but i just want to know you have any questions any doubts any clarifications or anything which you want me to put more emphasis or throw light on any student yeah yes i can see yomini raising her hand yeah Yes, sir. So my query is, uh, as you said that math is my compassion. So uh, can you tell me that how can I bring uh, interest in math? That's a wonderful question. Maybe I have been asked this question thousand times in my life. Okay, right in the last twenty to twenty-three years, you know. See, math is one subject which I believe you can only understand. by practicing okay your teacher teaches you in the school at home if you are just going through the sums mentally never ever will you understand maths so whatever you practice whatever you do in maths has to strictly be in w r i t i n g that is writing maths was never understood by reading okay one subject which i say i i, I said it so you know loudly that maths is not a subject which you are going to learn by reading maths is a subject which you are going to learn by writing 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 and practicing and i always believe that if you want maths to be your strong weapon your strong subject okay maths is a master of all the subjects i always believe that i'm not saying just because i'm a maths teacher for last so many years and maths is into my blood uh, i believe that the way your thought the way you look at it the way you approach maths has always to be something of constructive and positivity children get scared of maths because that fear is built in them by themselves the more you practice the more you you know you you write i, I repeat it again practice in writing as i already said to you the more you go through the concepts there are ideas there are concepts there are properties there are statements there are theorems there are applications there are logics all these you will have to read through yes there are certain areas of maths which need to be read but 90% of the areas in maths are those where you need to practice practice and trust me textbook is not the only source you should practice you should have extra reference books there is no need to buy anything everything is available online okay just google it out you will get a lot of reference material for maths english and all the subjects okay you need to practice a lot you need to write a lot you need to refer a lot of extra questions so that you develop your concepts your command 
your stronghold over maths. And as I said very clearly, read and remember all the logics, the applications, the statements, the concepts, the properties clearly so that your grip command over maths becomes firm and strong. And write so much that, you know, you have a full knowledge. Yes, let any damn sum come from any corner of the textbook or outside the textbook. Once your concepts, your theory, your, uh, you know, applications, properties and other such uh, ideas are very clear, you will be able to write and practice and solve any sum in mathematics. That's how I look at mathematics from an angle and from an approach. Yeah. Any other questions, students? Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, and yes. you did touch upon this while you were speaking. How do how does the changing media like the growth of podcasts, audio books, and apps like gra Grammarly and even auto correction on our phone affect the way that we perceive reading compared to the time where we didn't have these aids out? Side of books. See, sir, technology has developed so much that, you know, I'm in UAE, you all are in India, we are able to communicate, we are able to speak, we are able to interact. So when you talk of audiobooks or when you talk of podcast, they are a very useful means or even TEDx, not to forget, you know, which is a very favorite uh, channel on the LinkedIn. Okay. TEDx is one such branching on the LinkedIn where children or, you know, adults like us listen to speeches, listen to conversations, listen to real life experiences, listen to real life problems and listen to real life challenges. And they get an insight, you know, what is life all about? Like uh, in the last one and a half year. Okay. Uh, I mean, although I know about podcasts from last uh, almost, I can say three to four years, uh, last one and a half year, I have listened to more than 300 podcasts and that's how my knowledge gets enriched and my develop my you know understanding of various situations, concepts, problems, and the reality of the world has come more closer when you hear such podcasts and TEDx speakers. In TEDx, you see them live. It's a video recorded. In podcasts, you listen to them. And when you listen to them, you're able to come across real life situations and problems which we may not otherwise be able to read and understand. But when you listen, these situations give you the pricking and the dark realities of life or, you know, the problems of life which people have faced. I'm not talking only about COVID. I'm talking of times before when we have seen such strong, you know, we have seen cases where people who were down, who were nothing, who were, you know, with nothing, nothing, not even a level of education, or a level of knowledge, but they have become successful in life because of their approach, because of their willingness, because of their determination to come up in life. So I feel all these means are useful and uh, we should give an exposure to all our children to different mediums of technology and other things. Like I, I can tell you very strongly, sir, although, I mean, it is something I, I always think out of the box. We have recess in our school. I'm talking before COVID now. The number of children coming are very few. We always put on some, uh, you know, songs and uh, we put up some podcasts for them during the recess or we put up some announcements or we put up some famous TEDx speaker speeches. And trust me, our children enjoy that. They say, sir, recess itna jaldi mat khatam karo, humko aur sunna hai. I said, no, it's not that way. Uh, things have to go on. So I feel we should give our children an exposure to more media, it's not that Facebook is bad or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or, you know, uh, WhatsApp or Snapchat or, you know, Bottom or uh, uh, Telegram or Signal. These are all the medias which we should expose our children so that they learn, they read, they develop and accordingly they comprehend their knowledge in a better way. That's what I look at it in my angle. Yeah. <clears throat> It was definitely a really forward thinking and progressive approach to the whole topic. And you being a teacher and a principal of a school would definitely have the, uh, you know, have the regulation to be able to put across these ideas to your students. Another thing that I wanted to know from you, sir, is that yes. how do you try to maintain the culture of reading in your own school? 
Uh, that's a very, very good question. And yes, uh, see, I try to maintain the culture of reading. One is through the classroom reading, which teachers are the predominant factors. Okay. I, I tell my teachers that you speak, but that has got to be 10% and 90% is going to be the student talk. When students have to speak, discuss, interact, explain, they will definitely read, read, read because they have to speak out next day in front of the remaining 29 students in the class. We just have 30 students in the class as per the education council protocols. So our children are good readers. Secondly, I can tell you with one lakh person confidence, the number of competitions, activities, programs, celebrations, events, task, which my school has, I don't think any school in the world must be having so many activities. You just go to my parents' portal. My calendar of events for a month runs into three to four pages. And that three to four pages contains competitions which are definitely promoting reading and listening skills to all our children. Like we're going to have a podcast session where children are going to make podcasts. We're doing it for the third time in the last two years uh, towards the end of this month. Somewhere on, yeah. It's on the 31st of October, the Sunday, where we have podcast sessions by our children. We have assemblies by our children where children speak. It's totally 100% student-led assembly. We don't interfere. We only give them the theme. Okay, uh, like say, you know, example, uh, 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 say so-and-so day is Raksha Bandhan. Okay, so children are supposed to present an assembly on Raksha Bandhan. 5th September is Teacher's Day. So we have so many special assemblies in our school that children come forward, present the assemblies, right from the Quran recitation to the UAE National Anthem, to the Indian National Anthem, to the prayer song, to the thought for the week, to the amazing facts, to the articles, to the birthday song, to the musics, to the tableaus, to the skits, to the ballads. Everything is presented by our students. If I see any teacher on the stage, I just move my x-ray. My x-ray is my eyes. You know, I, I look at them very dangerously there. I say out from there. Even if children are making a mistake, not a problem. And my school is famous for such wonderful assemblies. Even online, we have conducted a lot of assembly. Today, you won't believe we had a career fair in the morning where more than 15 universities have interacted with my 11th and 12th standard students. And they were saying, these children are so lovely. <laughs> I said, come in school one day. You will know how lovely they are. The way they make mischief sometimes. And, you know, that's all part and parcel of the life. So we have a lot of activities, competitions, programs, celebrations. We have sometimes eminent speakers who talk to our children. They come face to face. That was before. Now we have online sessions. We have webinars. We have professional development sessions where I or you know some experts, maybe from Indian Embassy or maybe Nehru Science Center Mumbai, where I have deep connections of the last 26 years, or some eminent speaker from a different part of the world talks to the children. So this is how, you know, we try to bring up reading skills. I'm just telling you a few of them, which, you know, are coming into my ideas. And uh, we have a very long list of monitors, board monitors, cleanliness monitors, class monitors. And we have a very strong school council where we have the president, vice president, the finance minister, the cultural minister, again, for all the four houses, red, blue, green, yellow. So this is how we try to read up, you know, bring up the reading skills. And trust me, when we take interviews for council members, they say round one is peaceful, round two is super peaceful, round three, when the principal is taking our interview, he is going to make our bill sandwich by asking questions, which we may not have an answer to at all. So this is how we try to develop reading skills where our children are given a lot of exposure to activities, competitions, academics, sports, assemblies, well-being programs, the lessons which teachers are teaching. I tell my teachers very strongly, what you're teaching in the books is fine, but children want something beyond that. And beyond that is nothing but activities, competitions, events, programs, celebrations, assemblies, you know, meetings, gatherings, and uh, uh, fun and fair, food stalls, parties, and that's how my school goes about. And I'm lucky to have, you know, a very talented band of teachers, a very strong and innovative set of students and a very supportive set of parents and a very strong leadership team led by me 
and my section heads you know who who bring life into the school and it's according you know how you lead them and guide them according to that they take the next steps yes sir definitely being able to apply yourself in all of these different type of trades are is very important and i i personally feel that that is what actually builds you as a person the more you try uh, to do different types of things the more you try to apply yourself you know yourself better and you know where your strengths and weaknesses are both are things that you can hone in the best way possible and from your side being at a leadership position and as a teacher i think it is definitely very important what you're doing giving your students the freedom to be able to apply yourself is so important because a lot of schools i have personally seen they get get a bit stuck around the reputation that our events should be the best event but being able to give your students that freedom is fine if, even if the first five events aren't as successful or as great as you once envisioned through trying yourself and pushing yourself through those paths paths and passes of uh, you know falling and getting back up again that vision will once definitely be a reality so thank you for your answer sir back no, that's, to you that's been a way out because when i entered the school things were not as they look now 9 years of hard work of my teachers my students and myself has changed the face of the school and it is one of the most sought after school in abu dhabi and i can proudly tell you on the day of dasera we have inaugurated our second school sunrise international school which is going to be a house to 6400 students the largest cbse school in entire abu dhabi and alain abu dhabi and alain is one zone my school has 2900 students as of now this is a school which is my dream project but i will remain in my school my school is in an area called musaffa okay and my school is located in the city but i know that i'll be managing both the schools but this school has remained my original attachment and uh, trust you uh, trust me these children are wonderful they are fantastic Uh, i mean we just have around 400 children coming for face to face because the parents still have the fear but trust me the rules regulations here are fantastic the health conditions are superb uh, more than 92% of our children are vaccinated right from the age of 4 to 18 i'm talking you 4 to 18 okay once a child is birth and leaves my school and uh, we have pcr testing every 15 days which is absolutely free of cost and it's done within the school premises for the students for the teachers and for the support staff and uh, we have vaccination standards which make you do vaccination otherwise you are not supposed to enter the shopping malls and the public places almost from the 20th of september but for the children they have given grace and time but for the elders and people above 18 years definitely no entry if you are not vaccinated definitely there is no entry so and i mean the 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 culture is such that you get adapted to it and it's for your safety looking at covid you know 19 which has really havoked the economy in the last few months you know right from march 2020 but things are really opening up and and i'm sure you must have heard we are having expo 2020 in dubai dubai is 2 hours drive from abu dhabi the crowd which is visiting expo every day is more than 15 to 16000 on weekdays and on weekends it's 50 to 60000 people every day right from 10 in the morning to 2 o'clock in the night so that's how life goes about i i always believe we have to be more practical more open more creative more outspoken and more flexible and you know dynamic in our approaches to allow our students to grow prosper and learn and learning is not from books learning is learning from the world from the practical situation from day to day life and whatever they come across you know maybe events or you know programs like this what you are organizing learning takes place in all these situations <clears throat> definitely commendable sir all of these things now i would really love to hear those 25 list of books so that i can start ticking them off and hopefully have to, have read some of them yes i i will whatsapp it to mr alok who is in touch with me from last so many years okay so the 25 books according to the tedx speakers i i will just run through the name of the books i i will talk it in short because if i read everything about the 25 books it's going to be night around okay it's already 
uh, 6.50, 6.50 p.m. there in India, okay? One is the Handmaid's Tale, okay? Uh, it is a horrifying story of a government which is taking over some, which is taken over by some ultra uh, extreme religious group, okay? So this is the book called The Handmaid's Tale, number one. Number two is The Silver Pigs, excellent book. Excellent, excellent, you know. I have read this book personally and it talks about, you know, crime, corruption and uh, a lot. Signature of all things, another wonderful book. Uh, that's my book target for the month of uh, December, okay. Signature of all things by Elizabeth. Then you have Five Carat Soul, another very good book, okay. It's uh, okay. And uh, next is 1984, okay. Uh, by George Orwell, which talks about the life project, okay? And this is a book which cultivates the reading skills. Next is The Alice Network, another wonderful book. It's a novel, okay, that is talking about two different periods of time, World War I and post-World War II, two different situations. Good Night Stories, okay? These are also wonderful stories. Uh, then it is... Uh, Aichen, okay, which is talking about the next generation where children are, you know, interested in technologies and parents. Uh, drop the ball, achieving more by doing less. Again, this is, you know, how women are successful in life and how they are good at different jobs which they handle. The Power of Moments. Again, this is an excellent book. I have read it by certain experiences have extraordinary impact. This is again a great book, Athena Rising. Okay, that's another great book. The Heroine's Journey. Again, this is about ambitious women who are powerful and successful in life. Okay, the ends of the world. Okay, if you want to read the ends of the world, okay, this is a book which is lively and it's a great popular book. A Crack in Creation. Okay, this is by Jennifer Dudana and Samuel Stanberg, two of my famous authors and readers, okay. Uh, foolproof and other mathematical meditations. It talks about mathematics, longitude, okay, as to how a person is trying to come back to life after he's stuck up on a ship for a long time, okay. Braving the Wilderness, another great book, okay, how you have the courage to stand alone, fight alone when the whole world is isolating you. Third stage of life, The Wizard of Oz. I'm sure many must have heard about this book. This is a famous book by Elena D. Pison, okay? Another famous author. The Power of Meaning, The Hidden Brain, Alexander Hamilton, Hunger, A Member of My Body, and lastly, Living with a Seal. So these are the 25 to 26 books which, you know, I have read almost 15 of these books. 10 more remain for me. That's my journey. Maybe for the next few months, uh, November, December, January, February and all. But trust me, reading is something which, uh, you know, builds up your life and make reading as your passion, as your way of life and as a part and parcel of your life. If you want to be successful, strong, good and confident individuals. I, I always believe reading is something which make things easier for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, First sir. Time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Carry on, Chinmay. A person of aptitude that is as vast as yours definitely comes across through the way that you speak. The ideas that you have, which guide the way that you live, your beliefs and you and who you are as a teacher and a principal are so refined and impeccably perfect for all our gavaliers. I'm sure these concepts will be absorbed by them and drive them down whatever road they pick. You gave us so much knowledge covering so many aspects of a life morphing skill that can be summed up in one word, reading. For that, your time and your gracious presence we all thank you very much, sir. With this, I hand over the stage back to distinguished Toastmaster Alo. I would like to express my gratification and appreciation towards sir. 
for taking out time for these little children, those who wanted to eagerly hear from you, sir. So thanks, thanks very much, sir. Uh, I would rather than me speaking, I want my kids to give their views quickly. Sarah, I would like you to conduct the session where children can come up and they can show their gratification towards sir. So first of all, uh, can I give my can sure. I give my views? Sure, sure. Okay. So um, I wanted to say, sir, thank you so much for this event. It was really beneficial for beneficial for us. We learned. Um, Best part of it was the 25 books you told us. I have noted them all and I'm sure I'll finish them. The books, the part. Sarah, your voice is not reaching us. Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, it is good now. Yeah, so I was telling that um, the, poem, the part where you told us why reading is important really grabbed my attention. And I... I really won I was not so attracted to reading. Like I used to read, but not so much. And neither do I used to like math so much. But now that you have told me that math is so important and reading is also very important and it will help us, I'm sure I will surely read a book every day and solve maths. So that was my views and thank you so much, sir, once again. Now it's a go on. Yes. So, Sarah, would you like to ask anybody who is interested in giving their views, Avni or anybody, please feel free to unmute and tell us or raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Yeah. Anyone would like to tell? Manna, yes, go on. Uh, thank you, sir, for the wonderful session. I got, uh, got to learn more about the books rather than the book. Uh, what pages so then and i so then i thank you sir for giving those 25 books which i haven't read only i think i have read one or two books the others books i'm surely gonna read it from online or i'm gonna buy it thank you sir for the wonderful session once again thank you thank you thank you very much amana anybody else who would like to express their views? Sure, ask me, you can go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Sir, this was an amazing golden opportunity for us to know much more about reading. Since personally, me, I'm not interested in reading at all. But then uh, now, once you've told me the benefits about reading, I also got to know that it's much more better than visual. I mean, there are many uh, things which cause damage to our eyes and visual by here reading means before I used to think it's a very boring thing, you know, what reading to study reading. But then now I've understood how actually imaginative you can be because of reading, how many advantages you have, how much you can learn from it. And really, thank you very much. This was a game changer for me. And thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Manat, you may go next, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for this lovely session. I enjoyed a lot and now I'm more interested in reading and I learned many new things in reading and thank, thank you so much for giving the names of 25 books. I'll uh, surely read and I'll also tell my parents and encourage them also to read that books. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Afni is going to be our last person because we start meeting on time and we close it at, on time. So, Avni. Please present your Thank view. you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to listen to what you said. And I think that the books you told us were amazing. I think. I'm not sure because I haven't read them yet and I shouldn't be biased about anything. So I have read uh, The Wizard of Oz and George Orwell, I've read another book of his. So I think the books you suggested will be amazing. So thank you for coming and speaking to us on this wonderful day. And thank you so much once again. And over to Alok, sir. Thank you, Avni. 
Thank you, sir. So can we see some reactions and only the heart reaction should go if you have really enjoyed? And to capture a good picture, can we have everybody dancing that you are empowered? So if you can dance a little bit, show, throw some hands up in air so that we can see that you have got benefited out of the session. So I want to see, continue to do that if you are happy. Shreya, don't feel shy. It's okay, it's okay. And this is, this is important that children should be happy and what beautiful thoughts sir has brought. Yeah, now you can relax, Sachi, if you are feeling tired. So I would like to conclude by saying that thank you very much, sir, because of the kind of... Uh, pearls of wisdom you have shared with these children, they are really going to get benefit out of it. And if one of them will also turn into a book reader, our goal is accomplished. So that's what we feel that yes. we cannot, uh, we cannot force everybody or inquire everybody. But if one person also gets motivated, that's the job done. Thank you very much, sir. And we'll keep in touch with you for more such sessions because now we are not going to leave you <laughs> because this session, we thought that it is going to be 20 minutes or 30 minutes long, but you spoke so very well that everybody stayed glued to the screen and they wanted to hear more from you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night, children. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good reading time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir.